Okay, and we're back with the Dell Optiplex GX1 personal computer courtesy of Ross ECB. For those that are just tuning in, it's got a 350 megahertz Intel Pentium 2 slot CPU, 384 megabytes of memory, two hard drives, this is a 6.4 gigabyte Western Digital, 6 gigabyte Quantum, replaced optical drive that came out of an Apple Macintosh, 3.5 inch floppy, there is a modem installed in the slot down there, and it's running dual boot with Windows XP and Windows 95 OSR 2.5 or Windows 95 C, depending upon which way you want to refer to it. Alright, a couple things to point out here. I figured out what the majority of the connectors that I did not know about in the previous video were. Of course, I don't remember exactly what all I had pointed out, but I am going to point out a few things here. Number one, is up here, not for a business audio speaker, those are actually two CD-ROM analog audio inputs because of course this has two five and a quarter inch bays I guess they expected that you would put a second CD-ROM drive in there and maybe I will, although I don't think I will because like I said, the, the idea for this machine is to turn this into a little nostalgia machine make it just like the system that I had or that was present in the elementary school computer lab back when I was in sixth grade. All right, so there's that connector. I think that was the only other one over there that I had mentioned. There was this, this tappy connector. And again, that's for some kind of telephone. Presumably, that is for maybe a speaker for listening to modem noises, but I'm really not 100% sure. More clarification is definitely needed on that. And this down here, the AMC connection, it's labeled AMC. Looks kind of like a IDE connection, but it is not. Actually, that is ATI Media Connector, or ATI Media Channel, or something like that. Multimedia, I should say. And what that was used for is that was used for special ISA, maybe even PCI, video capture cards, and it was used as a sort of Visa feature connector. The video card would take the, uh, the signal and overlay it on the video using this connection here. I actually have one such capture card installed in a... Oh, it's an HP Pavilion 3260, I believe. It might be a 3280, but I think it's a 3260. And that also has the onboard ATI video. Of course, this is only present on systems that have the ATI... or that have ATI video chipsets. Really, I think the really only benefit you get with that is faster overlay, faster performance, and all that kind of stuff. All right. So, what else did I mention? Well, I could have didn't really mention this, but I could have just looked over here and figured out what the CPU speed was because it tells you just like that. Looks like 266, 300, 333. It's set to 350, 400, 450, up to 500 megahertz. There's also a bus 66M there, but I'm not entirely sure what that would do. Presumably for the bus speed. And I think this connector over here... Well, maybe not. I would have thought that that would go to the business audio speaker, but... I guess not. Maybe I'm misremembering things and this wouldn't have even had provision for a business audio speaker. The last thing I'm going to mention is as follows. This down here, which I had thought was a cache slot, while Big Dum Dum didn't realize or didn't remember that that couldn't be a cache slot because the whole point of these slotted architectures was so that the cache was on the same board as the CPU, thus improving the speed. So this wouldn't have an outboard cache connector. No, it's labeled video upgrade, as you might be able to see there. And what that's for is expanding the video memory, of course. All right. So, what are we going to do with this? Well, it doesn't really need to have two hard drives, but I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'll put the cover back on, I'll power it up. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, actually, no, I will do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if there's an updated BIOS. I'll install the updated BIOS. And then from there, I'll remove this drive, see if it still boots. And from there, I'll install all the drivers and hopefully get everything going the way that it's supposed to. Okay, I went ahead and I did the upgrade off camera. I've never bricked a BIOS once doing an upgrade, but 
It went from AO3 to A10. I've heard it said that sometimes Dell systems do not like massive upgrades like that, so I was kind of a little nervous about doing that. However, it survived the ordeal. I don't see anything that's really changed, though. So I don't know. All I know is I think there was something about the NIC with relation to Cisco stuff. I don't really know what all that means, but there you go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be replacing the clock battery, and I'll be pulling out that hard drive, and we'll see if Windows still happens to boot. I'm going to change the battery, and I think it remembered its power on state. Yep. Looks like it is actually working. So that is good news. Once I change that battery, the old one had this multimeter over here, and it's completely flat. We measured about 7 millivolts, so... Yeah, it's toast. I'm going to pull out this other drive. But I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect it. And actually, I'm going to go into System Setup. I'm going to set it to None. And then I'm going to disconnect it, so that way it doesn't complain about it. You can see it show up there. E-I-D-E Drive. So let's put 0... And Alt B, save the settings and reboot. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna have to redo the boot loader. It looks like. Okay, so I just went into Windows XP and I changed the boot file that is on the hard drive, the primary hard drive. Let's see what it does. It should just boot straight into Windows 95 as so or like so, such as the case may be. Okay, so I decided to leave it the way I had it, which is to say I have the bootloader configured with a timeout of zero and booting to the Windows 95 partition. But the one thing I think I probably should have done before I messed around with this too much is fixed this so that way the Windows 95 partition took up the whole 6.4 gigs. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to have to do that. And I also just noticed that my battery on my camera is running down, so I think I'm going to have to plug the camera in. So I will be right back. I've forgotten how much of a royal pain it was. Resize partitions under Windows XP. Hopefully, with any luck, this will actually work. Don't like how long that took, but it looks like it didn't actually work. Then we'll get to see if it actually still boots. That's going to be the interesting thing. Ready for this? Alright, let's uh, give this a shot. Pull out the USB stick at the back. It doesn't need to be plugged in anymore. So we'll see if it managed to trash the whole operating system. I suspect it probably did, because my life is a comedy. For some unknown third party. Third party I'd love to eradicate. <laughs> yep. Nothing can ever work, can it? Nope. Nothing can ever work. Still in boot to the CD. I don't know what the deal is. If it even supports CD booting. I need to be making a boot floppy after all. Okay, so I got my boot floppy. Let's see if it'll boot to CD-ROM now. There we go. Start computer with CD-ROM support. That is what I would like to do. use that as our boot drive because this is a DOS boot disk so we should have MSCD EX I'm going to go ahead and eject this CD put in my Windows 95 disk it said E hopefully that's correct I think D is a a RAM drive, 
All right, set up from Windows 95. This is Windows 95B, by the way. So, may end up having difficulty with USB and stuff, but I really don't care. Because the system that was at the elementary school had the original Windows 95 on it from Floppy Disk. I think. Might have been from the CD, but I know that it was the vanilla Windows 95. So, Windows 95A, I believe, is what that was. Maybe it was Windows 95 without anything. I don't remember all the details, but... Well, there you go. Alright. Setup is going to perform a routine check of your system. To continue, press Enter. Okay, please wait while Setup initializes. Alright, so it looks like I'm going to have to run FDisk. General failure we need to try A. Abort. Okay, let me, let me try something here. Okay, I just deleted the partition. We went to escape to exit F disk. We will control alt delete on that. I went ahead and I pulled it out. I tried to boot, and nothing would try and boot, so I'm assuming that everything's going to work. Of course, that's a pretty big assumption to be making. Probably not even a correct one. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can eject that. Put in our Windows disk. Alright. E. What? Port D. Oh, it's because C is missing. Aha. Well, that makes sense now. We're D set up. Well, that's kind of stupid. Well, this is a little bit more promising. It's not immediately just going on to the next step. That doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to work. I hope that it's not going to be screwed up because of all of the extra stuff with the virtual drive and all that mess that's on this. Actually, it was probably screwing up earlier because uh, the... That sounds awesome. <laughs> is that the optical drive or is that the hard drive? That is the hard drive. I'm going to assume that it's alright, but uh, anyway. I was probably screwing up earlier because the uh, RAM drive was taking drive C, so it was thinking, yeah, that's drive C, we can install that, right? Alright. Exit. Here we go. Welcome to Windows 95 Setup. As best as I remember it, this isn't going to work with USB devices, but again, I don't care. So. If I want to use USB in an old version of Windows, I've got plenty of machines to do that. Okay, install the C Windows. There should be no installed components. And we'll go for a custom install. Just select our stuff. You've seen a Windows 95. Oop, I'm going to enter my product key as well. You've seen a Windows 95 install several times. I'm not going to show the rest of this process. And we're almost done. If I hit a snag. Because, for whatever reason, this thing keeps popping up messages about how it can't read the A drive. Because of the drive setup for my boot disk. And if you hit retry, it locks the machine up. So I found that out the hard way. I had to restart the whole setup process again. So, you know, there you go. Restarting your computer and finishing setup. Please remove all disks from floppy drives. Alright. So that's what we'll do. System will restart. And hopefully Windows will not be messed up. Beautiful. No trace of the bootloader left. That is a really loud hard drive, I'm telling you what. Yeah, Western Digitals are always like that. 
In a way, I almost miss that. I mean, it can be kind of annoying at times, but uh, at least you knew when your drive was working. Especially when your drive was in trouble. Okay, there's the installation step done. You can see, no messed up drive letters. <laughs> I still think it's quite amusing that it thinks this is a Pentium Pro. Yeah, I don't think so. It's not a Pentium Pro. Okay, I'm going ahead and I've put the case cover back on. I've also removed the quantum drive. She is actually a Quantum, it's not a Maxter. I didn't realize that Quantum actually made it to the point where 60 gigabyte drives were being produced, but evidently they did. Power the machine up. Watch it start up. Still have the CD in the drive, probably you could remove that. Let it test the RAM here. Look at how fast that was. I'd like to see your modern machine boot up that fast. Alright, so now it's time to get drivers ready. What I got here are two audio drivers. This is the Crystal audio driver. I'm going to go ahead and just load it straight off the floppy, hopefully. Let's see if it works. Alright, GX1, Precision 210, 410, and 610. Hit OK. Unzip. Alright. And it opens up Idiot Exploiter. Alright, let's see. What version of Internet Explorer is this? 3.0. Open it. Yes. Install driver. Crystal. Serious Logic Company. Your system must be restarted to complete installation. Blah blah blah. Reboot. Which is going to be a hard reboot. So pull that out. And let's see if we get blasted with music. There we go. Next. Well, it won't find it on the floppy. Other locations. Okay. Crystal driver disk. Gotta love it when their disks are wrong. Gotta love it when they have their floppies wrong. Or, yeah, their disks wrong. Had to redirect it away from the floppy into the place where it was located. Now I bet I'm going to... Right. Well, we got audio now, so that's good. I'm going to close that. Put our floppy back in. This next one is the Indio Kodak, so it's probably not really that interesting. Probably not even required either, but I'm going to install it anyway. Now we're going to be installing the network, which I hope is the correct one, because there are a couple of them, and neither of them is particularly well labeled. Wow. I can't even read that. Okay. I assure you I read them very carefully.
driver installation and update. Let's go for Windows driver installation. Windows 95 should be NDES. Hopefully it's NDES. And on client 32. I want to assume it's NDES. Oh, guess what disk is there? Wow, that's kind of stupid. Go to A, there. I'm not really sure why it screwed that up, just that apparently it did. Let's see what else gets messed up. Well, I think that was successful. First disc is kind of useless, as it turns out. Let's see, well, we're going to get a full restart. Next thing I need to install is the video driver. Here's a useful trick. When something asks you to reboot, select no. Go to shut down. Go to restart and hold the shift key. Theoretically, if this works, instead of completely rebooting the whole machine, you'll get this sort of soft restart. Hopefully, you did not just break my machine. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Excellent security. Here's a quick and easy way to get around. Limitations trying to install things. Go away. Let's just minimize all this stuff. Probably could uh, remove the CD. I don't think I'm going to need that. Alright, unzip. What's it going to open when it's done? Oh. ATI graphics driver for Windows 98. Huh. Open. Kind of strange it's running Windows 98 when it thinks it's 98. Well, this is a driver for 98 when I said I wanted Windows 95. Well, hopefully it's going to work. Ta-da! get a full reboot out of it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the CD. Just because I don't think it's required anymore. And we'll see if we get decent video. Or if I can fix the video at least. Look at that. It worked. Awesome. So. That's all good to go. Now, I'm going to be trying something a little bit new here just to get some added USB support from the MSFN forum. Extended USB supplement for Windows 95 OSR2. I assure you I read that very carefully. It's running scan disk. Hmm. Well, let's see how long that takes. Pull the floppy out of the drive, doesn't need that there. This will probably be what messes up the system and is going to make me do it all over again. Okay. Let it reboot the machine. And we'll see what happens. 
though. This is a much longer video than I really planned and anticipated. Let's do that. Grind the hard drive. I don't know how well you can see some of this stuff. I've, if I remember right, this camcorder that I'm using actually has a pretty mediocre image sensor in it, according to V West Life. And if there's anybody that I'd believe. When it comes down to camcorders, it'd probably be V West Life. But this does have Night Shot Plus. So, there's one thing. Let's see what's next. If it does anything further. Hmm. Well, let's try plugging in a USB drive and we'll see if it works. Well, that isn't going to work, because as you can see, PCI Universal Serial Bus is not showing up. I have no idea what chipset it is, and it won't find a driver anyway, so that is not happening. But, we can go ahead and try out the uh, B functionality on this thing. After I turn the volume down a little bit, because I don't want it to be too loud. My Dell Latitude XPIs have in this background. No, 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 no. We can't have that. We're gonna have the background that was on the machine in the computer lab, just like that. And the screensaver, too. With the maximum number of windows. See how well it handles that. Not too badly. Actually, that's not bad at all. So, sometimes I'll change this. Usually when I go ahead and change it, I'll change it to something like Storm or Red, White, and Blue. I don't know if I'm going to actually change it or not, though. I think I've used that one a time or two. So I'd like something that would actually match the desktop background. Actually, I think I like that. Okay, we'll leave it at that. I think I'm going to leave this video at that as well because it's going on for far long enough and I've got other things I should probably be doing and my tape is probably going to end at some point too, so... That's it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. That's doing something interesting. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.